Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule Waves 2 as Japan, episode number 38. Yes, I had to look that up. Of course I did. It's been like four days since I recorded. Quite a long time. Uh, yeah, this is this has uh, been a pretty busy uh, week for me. And I, I'm i feeling I'm feeling a little bit of a, a burnout right now, which is a little unfortunate. Not on Rule the Waves, by the way, but just on YouTube in general. And I think I might need to take like a, a break after this series ends. Rule the Waves is just, is the, I don't know, I, I mean, you could say first and foremost by view count, my most popular series. But honestly, it's the thing I, I really like about my, it's just something I don't, it's, it's something I've always loved doing. <laughs> I don't see Rule the Waves going away, not at least for probably another year or so. I, it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to play and... Uh, you know, I'll probably take breaks in between and all that. Anyway, uh, let's get to the game itself because it has been a while. And I was trying to just very quickly. I'm on a bit of a timetable, unfortunately. Um, so things are going really well in this war. All we want is for the invasions to fire for the... Um, which they did because we had this nice battle. Um, we... I guess I'm thinking about what if what if I start doing a second invasion in the same sea zone? Is that something which is possible? I feel like it makes sense from my perspective, from an admiral's perspective, not realistically, but just for game, um, the game mechanics that I already need all my fleet in Southeast Asia anyway. And even I may want to move down some of these uh, Daigojis. Uh, it looks like at least two of them are ready, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that they came out in order, so let's just move these two down to Southeast Asia. Um, I don't I don't think I'm facing any real threat up in Northeast Asia. Okay, so we have one battleship, one battlecruiser. I wouldn't say it's a threat. I mean, it's a threat, but it's not like a big threat. It's I'm not, I don't think I need to be worried about an invasion yet. The points, as it says here, is actually two to one in my favor, so I don't think that they can invade. I'll be taken out. Let's even pretend I take half the points out and it becomes one to one. Still think it favors me. Russia has corvettes here, one light cruiser here. They don't have well, they have one heavy cruiser and two destroyers. So they don't really have anything in the area which they can bring in to even tip the balance in in their favor. And I would love to have those Daigojis in a battle. That would be that would be wonderful. The Gachimujis have done extremely well so far. We've seen how effective of a design this was. Uh, they, I mean, they really held their own against those French battle cruisers. Ultimately, yes, we all know it's the destroyers, the torpedoes, which are winning the day. But um, in order to facilitate that, you need to be able to hold the line. I mean, your dreadnoughts, you don't want them to sink. I'm starting to view this more in like an RPG, like multi MMO RPG type set. That my battleships are honestly much more like tanks, in this playthrough at least in particular, than damage dealers. The damage dealing is gonna be done by torpedoes. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't plan it that way. It's not, I don't, I don't know if that's, it's kind of an interesting thing, you know, new plan is to just have your battleships be able to tank hits until your destroyers can close in some tactical, tactically decisive manner and torpedo them it's kind of interesting but uh it's not, it's not the it's not the game plan right now at least okay so coastal bombardment this is in northeast asia my temptation here is to decline a small engagement this is a little bit closer to our airfields um yeah i'll accept this one okay they declined well that's fair uh only the navy can win this war uh, we're close to understanding stuff. Oh, we have deck park. Increases aircraft capacity of carriers. I don't know if that's something that we're supposed to manually do or not, but it used to be a little button you would check, and then that was kind of like a... became a button which didn't do anything, or maybe I actually think it never did anything, and they finally said, hey, we're not doing <laughs> it. doesn't do anything, so don't worry about it. Oh my goodness, good reliability on a flying boat. We may never replace it. Heavy fighting and enemy crews are holding up our advance. Okay, well, let me know if you, if I can help in any way. Maybe giving the army more money, as they just asked me to. 
Okay, they just sank two of my destroyers, and despite our 67 operational submarines and our unrestricted warfare policy, we're not making much headway. I'm going to switch to prize rules. Look, there's no point in risking anything if we're not gaining any benefits anyways. Prize rules should result in more enemy warships being sunk as well. So, all right, and we have our Daigojis, our elite dreadnought. It's really an elite battleship. We're going back to calling things battleships again, not dreadnoughts any longer. Uh, yeah, although they're <laughs> words to the contrary from the game. But this is, I just really can't wait to see this thing in action. And having kind of said what I just said about how our battleship seems to be tanking more than anything. Okay, battle in support of land combat, obviously we accept. They decline, well, you know. I asked in what way we can help. <laughs> They gave me an opportunity. Uh, we can, sir, please don't end the war. Thank you. Triple turrets on light cruisers. That's pretty interesting. Later air launch torpedoes. This is huge. Improves hit chances of air launch torpedoes. We already had some good effect. We can now build air bases with 60 aircraft. This is a pretty big turn for us. Um, they sank the Kitakazi. We actually sank more merchant ships on prize rules this time than we did on unrestricted. Maybe the latest patch. Oh, Italy's in the war. I forgot about that. Uh, not really expecting much to happen there anyway, but might as well get these new Houghton Marus um, right into trade protection as well. If they can help with ASW, they can help with anything. Just enlist them immediately. I think we have a lot more ships coming up. We have a pretty significant budget right now, but honestly, our funds have been below 100 million for so long. Well, I guess this is 100,000 of... I think these are in numbers of, you know, hundreds of thousands, but, I mean, or in thousands, but, yeah, I'll probably just treat it that way. It is nice to see that they just chopped off the last, um, I don't know, is it? Yeah, it makes sense, I don't know, it, it's just so insignificant, the decimal on this eight don't matter that much. Um, uh, what, what, what am I looking at here? Tsunamis were going to be done in three turns, five turns, that's crazy. They're coming up pretty quick. Honestly, we're going to have to cycle in new ships to build, and I know that our submarine... We've won a lot of this campaign, a lot of this series so far, on the backs of our submarines. And that's kind of satisfying for me, because it's not... I, I really do prefer, I've mentioned this a number of times, that I prefer the strategic map mode. And submarines win the war for you on the strategic map mode, which is great. <laughs> it means that, <laughs> you know, if I wanted to climb battles... I will actually just still win the war. This is the best situation. This is exactly why I built my auto resolve simulator. Um, now, gosh, I've, I've been kind of a little bit out of touch with Rule the Waves and development stuff, mod stuff. Um, I haven't worked on my Rule the Waves mods in a while. So just for those who were looking for an update, I know that there was some people looking for an update on the AI Wars one. Uh, it has not been, it, it hasn't happened, it's not expected to happen in the near future. So we can request a new aircraft proposal. Okay, we have one flying boat, which also has good... What's the difference here? You're faster, you're better... Because we should probably obsolete some stuff. This float plane scout is still the best thing I have, which is embarrassing, very embarrassing. But this is better in every way except for toughness the one mark is toughness but it's better we're going to obsolete this one okay next we have fighters it looks like it's time for us to build. i mean we obviously went through a lot of torpedo bombers trying to get some improvements there let's see which of these if any are the best i like the bottom one for speed it doesn't have quite the range of the top one but it has average i think we'll probably obsolete the middle ones and just move completely towards the bottom one doesn't have the toughness of this one, but yeah, it it actually has the same heavy range as this one. So this is no longer part of the service. It's going to be obsoleted. And that doesn't mean the aircraft are just going to immediately go away, but we should switch production over to this torpedo bomber. And because this is poor reliability, I just can't, can't see any reason not to obsolete it. And now we have exactly one plane per type. Um, that's really good. Uh, fighters, yeah, we need new fighters. So let's request a new fighter. I've never found a more successful combination than speed and maneuverability. 
maybe speed and firepower, but that usually happens only into the 1930s. I don't know when it'll happen for us, if the delayed technology impacts aircraft stuff as well. But yeah, let's um, do that. Seems like a good, what is this? Show up sleep, no, yeah, uh, we don't wanna do that. Still wondering about forcing a second invasion. I would prefer to end the current one because, hey, I'm, I, I know I just mentioned about, okay, so let's build a couple more submarines. Let's get maybe 10, medium range ones and that cuts the surplus in half so that's good uh, okay oh enemy radar close by okay that that's okay we should have our aircraft involved we don't and it's gonna be nighttime soon and this is with light cruisers all right well we'll just play this out at pretty quick speed i think i like the strategic stuff a lot more and this is not an extremely interesting one That's right, this is an enemy raid on coastal shipping. So where are they? We'll just kind of patrol the mouth over here. Okay, let's... No. I, I want... The... Oh my gosh, they had a battle cruiser. <laughs> we got pretty lucky. Looks like they actually got stuck. <laughs> they got stuck in this alcove. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, because we there's nothing we could have done against them. I mean, I guess, what am I saying? Actually, the nighttime conditions might have been perfect for a uh, torpedo attack, which is what we've done pretty well for ourselves so far. Nonetheless, a light cruiser is not really what you want to go up against a battle cruiser. I'll just wait for my computer to decide to work again. Could be any moment. There it is. It's back. Okay, so how are we doing? Everything looks about right. We went to unrestricted. What was the most recent? Uh oh, we got a message. Found it. It was hidden. Uh, they want to buy. Yes. Hey, there are allies right now. Even more power to them. That's not looking. That does not look very threatening at all. Oxygen fuel torpedoes. Okay, yeah, we heard about this enemy fortifications holding up your advance months ago. Hopefully you resolve that issue. There we go. I think it was actually bugged. It looks like prize rules is like is like somehow the default until you turn it off and turn it back on. <laughs> you know, typical IP support, uh, IT support. 3.5, that's quite good. Hmm. Yeah, we're missing out. We should be building more ships, and I... Just can't think what we might want to be building right now. Let's take a look. Let's just think. We've lost a lot of light cruisers. It's probably time for a new light cruiser. In fact, how are we doing with anti-aircraft? We still don't have AA directors, right? And these are not dual purpose at five inch guns? No. Hmm. And so I don't think we've have Primary guns on destroyers able to do dual purpose either. Hmm. So I think the best thing, I honestly think the best thing for us to do is to build another heavy cruiser and make this just another heavy light cruiser. Um, why? Because might as well give it 8 inch guns, basically, it's exactly what the game gave me. I think that's the quality 1 ones we have, right? Yeah, we have 6 and we have 8. So let's go with quality 8. That would be amazing. Let's go with 8 inch quality one. Okay, okay, we're in business here. We got the triples. Can we do quadruples? We can. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Um, this is awesome. What I is what I meant to say. We'll go down to two for the deck. This is I'm still trying to treat this as a heavy cruiser. Oh my gosh, it's the speed which is killing us. Look how this is. Look, going from thirty to thirty-one costs us seven hundred and fifty tons. Now going from twenty-nine to thirty only costs us four hundred more or less. 
And, oh man, but it's another 400 from there. So if you're gonna go to 29, you might as well go to 30. And then this is, now we're down to 220. Okay, good. So 220 is, so we're definitely gonna be stuck at a minimum at a stuck. I mean, the minimum we're gonna make this ship is 28 knots. It's the minimum. I might make it the minimum. I'm just not, I'm not fond of wasting too much tonnage, but 780 to 320, that is pretty bad. That's 460 and 320, that's basically 460 as well. Yeah, so either we go to 28 or we go to 30. I don't know, 30 is not that bad. 30 is not that bad, 30 is not that bad. We could either up armor it. Hmm, there's lots of little tricks we can do here. What if we do something like put a speed priority on it? I don't know what that that's actually going to mean. I probably I think what that means is bad things on the strategic map more likely to have problems. It's also interesting. We could do magazine box. Hmm. I might want to do this. Bring this up to six. Bring this up to three, four, three. Leave at two. Leave at two, maybe. Turrets go up to six. Okay, what if we go down to five, six? Incline belt. This incline belt is going to increase the belt effectiveness, but also increase the number of hits which happen on our deck. Now our deck is not particularly good, so that's not necessarily good. Here's a question for anybody out there. What happens if you have 2.5 inches of deck? What happens when it's divided by two? Does that mean it goes to one or 1.5? That's my question. Turret top, 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. Torpedo defensive one is, actually, it sounds fine to me. We can go up just a little bit, maybe take it up to 11.5 11, so we can get more guns. Um, increased elevation, improved director. This is gonna be a great ship, and this is like the, the key point, of course, that this thing is gonna have dual purpose secondaries. Um, we will increase the tonnage. I don't know, I might even drop some other stuff. This is kind of a fun ship. I've never built anything like this. Now, we are probably overkilling the number of guns. Frankly, I think we are. Uh, can we take mines now? Why do I say that? Because this thing is probably gonna kill any other heavy cruiser it finds, massively overkilling it. But let's go down to maybe triples. Doesn't save too much, but we're still gonna have nine triple, so nine eight inch guns total. Mm, you know what I really wanna do? What I really wanna do, and oh my gosh, it's amazing. I can actually do this while we have it up. Let's take a look at what other people have. This is like a full shipbuilding episode now. I mean, this is, we're going deep. Let's look at other ships, compare them. This is like a full look at what's going on in other people's worlds. Uh, they have eight 10 inch guns. Ouch. Well, just when I thought. Hmm. That is a damn nice ship. Four inch belt. Hmm. I trust the speed of 28 more than I trust the speed of 18. I think speed of 18 is when you don't know it all. So click on this and this one's 31. Hmm. Eight eight inch guns and 12 four dual purpose. This is this is what I'm this is what I'm comparing with, yeah. Well, nine eight-inch guns really isn't that much better. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to the original configuration. Let's go with it. Will we beat eight ten-inch guns? That's a good question. I I honestly think whoops. I honestly think whoever lands the first blows is gonna win that fight. They have the advantage of having four double turrets. With, which is, by the way, I just think it's not an efficient design necessarily, but it's a beautiful design. I really like the look of those. I like the look of triple turrets, like the Iowa's, Yamato's, all those. They look good. But I, I really do also like a lot of these uh, British and German ships with the 
four double turrets. Bismarck, for example. Kind of like that look. Um, yeah, but the goal should be at this point, even if we have to expend more tonnage or do something else to get more dual purpose, how many can we get? Just keep cranking. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what will that mean? Well, we are going to want directors on this eventually. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about... No, no, th this one's not going to have... This one is not going to have float planes. But for 11,900, by the way, how much was it increased? Uh, 60. This is about 60, okay. Just making sure I'm not missing a min-max knob. Uh, rounds per gun should probably go up, so I'm glad that we still have a little bit more. 8-inch gun? I mean, the battles, we often do run out of ammunition, so I think having a little bit more would be a good thing. Uh, yep, we're probably going to go up again then. Just take her up to a flat 12,000. Why not? Which is going to give us two things. A little bit more ammunition, but then more importantly, the ability to put A directors on, which I, I probably should pad this. We could always take this number down. I think that taking this number down to even 20 or whatever will be fine, but I'm gonna pad this right now with light AA guns, uh, 16 of them, which will be just dismissed altogether when we get the AA directors. 130 rounds is, it's probably, a, uh, it's probably about right. It's probably about right. Okay, so pretty interesting design we have going on here. Kind of a crazy turret. Yeah, but those turrets are gonna be important. I don't know. I have no idea. If, I, I don't have a good sense. It's a little unusual for me not to, but I don't have a good sense about the combat performance of the ship. The most, the thing I'm most interested in is how many hits are you going to have that are going to utilize the magazine box versus hit, you know other hits that are just going to go through thinner armor. Actually, having 2.5 inches of belt is not bad. I mean, that's still light cruiser style. You know light cruiser sizes. So that's not bad. Could be worse. Calling Tower 3 because <laughs> just barely. We, we basically just want it to cover splinters. <laughs> Turrets of 6. I think that's good. 2.5. Okay. Well, I think that this is our ship. And she's going to be called Ashigara. It's kind of a fun name. Probably should be spent on a light cruiser instead of a heavy cruiser. But boy, I, you know, I have to say I like this. I do like this. Okay, let's save. I think to pre- Like, how much would it be for two? Oh, it's only two. This thing could actually take... And I don't have any torpedoes. Okay, what if we bump it up by 500? And then we add some torpedoes? This thing is going to be... Oxygen fuel torpedoes, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man, my, my mind is a little bit out of control. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. How do we, yeah, I was going to say, how do we have the top capacity for all this? And the answer is we don't. I mean, this is one hell of a ship. She also has to be at this point because she's 13,000 tons. She's 57 million. So this is this has to serve the monetarily, financially, this is the cost of two light cruisers. So the, one of these has to fulfill the role of two light cruisers. Now, what I think this is going to mean is my light cruisers are ultimately going to be designated as um, CLAAs that can take care of destroyers and launch torpedoes. So I probably am just categorizing things the CAs are really my cruisers. These are my battle cruisers. These are the ones that are meant to take on cruisers, enemy cruisers of any kind. Well, not battle cruisers, but you know, you get the point. There's no battle cruisers anymore, right? We're only building fast battleships. So the new norm is heavy cruisers are going to be battle cruisers, and I don't, I don't, they don't need to be thirteen thousand for good, for crying out loud. But this one just happens to be unit machinery. This is the yeah. How much is that? I think that with this kind of ship, I do want this because, and what can I do to get get down there? I don't think I can do enough. 
they don't need much protection on the bridge. Uh, yeah, so this is how, how it's going to be because this the name of the game for this ship is going to be Evasion. It has to escape the battle cruisers, the battleships. It has to get out of the way of those fast of those uh, more powerful ships. So that means if it takes one hit, we don't want it to stop. I will choose that. So we have literally checked all the boxes on this thing, except for Colonial Service. <laughs> and I'm really happy with the results so far. I'm, I'm actually almost surprised we were able to break this, to bring this in under 13,000 tons. She's going to have a total of 11 8-inch guns. They are quality one, increased elevation, improved directors. She's also going to sport six torpedoes per, um, per broadside. She has a placeholder of 16, perfectly fitting at, this is, let's we'll say we gotta go. This is it, this is it, this is the one. I won't look any further. Gosh, Roll Away was such a great game, you know? You have these moments where you're designing it and then, then you get stuck in these battles and you don't have fun, but okay, thank God. Convoy defense. I'm, I'm just gonna, I have a feeling this is gonna be destroyers. I'm gonna decline. Okay, I don't really care. Okay, good, that's very good. Helped on our explosive research. We have developed an, oh, they have developed an improved model. This is good. Is this the one that we had not obsoleted? Oh man, that is great. That is really good news, but actually it's, <laughs> oh, they, they fixed the toughness. The one thing I complained about, oh, it's a little bit lower in toughness. It's not quite the eight that the other one was, but look, it's a mediocre, very mediocre improvement, but it's something, it's free. Sank the destroyer. Oh, damaged the Daigoji. Well, thank God she wasn't destroyed. And actually, you can kind of tell even from that, um, oh, they actually sank a heavy cruiser. That's great. You can kind of tell from the three months time that the Daigoji is gonna be in, that she's not, she's actually well protected from, well, she's only TP2, right? Yeah, <laughs> our heavy cruisers have as much torpedo protection as our battleships. Something is wrong here, but that's fine. So once that design study is done, we'll probably build three of those. And I didn't actually see the cost per, boy, what a ding dong. I didn't actually look at what the cost per, um, I, don't know, I guess we can just open it. No, I don't want it just in case, just in case it messes up something <laughs> with the design studies. It makes me redo it or something. I don't know. So what, do we have anything? Uh, I guess we can go to, so Korsakoff. I assume here. I might want to increase this one, Korsakoff. It is covering the Northern area. Yeah, let's go ahead and increase it. Uh, No, that's not what I meant, sorry. I want to go to base overviews and then northern. No, there it is. Course, got there it is. So we'll ex build and expand this one. Great, and then we'll uh, we'll add some additional aircraft to that one as well. Where are our other bases? I would be, you know, what would be great is if you could see where your like the aircraft range on this map. You just turn on, where's my aircraft range? Um, that way I know what my coverage is and where I need new air bases. Um, so Korsakov, and then, I mean, is there a way to, this is probably not gonna help me now. Let's go to base overviews then, and we'll just take a look in Northeast Asia. We have, Way Highway has a base of 40. And then Haika, uh, Hokkaido has the Ho hey, Hakodote, Hakodate, and the Wakanai. <laughs> <Wak -wakanai? laughs> oh boy. Hokkaido. So we have Wakanai and Korskov. So yeah, this is probably redundant then. Hakodate is good, but Wakanai is redundant. So we'll reduce the air, the bay air, uh, the base capacity. I think what I'll what I'll do is um, I'll leave everything fine for now. But the 
Which one was it? Yeah, the Wakanai will be eventually scrapped, and the Korsakov and the Hakodate will have to cover everything else. And I believe a lot of battles have happened. Actually, the Wakanai one has been... That has been an important battle location. We've had a lot of them in between Ontaro and Wakanai. So maybe I'll just leave all three until we finish this war with... Yeah, of course, until we finish the war with Russia, it doesn't make sense to to cut down, cut any of the uh, airfields in that area, of course. Cruiser action, not that I really want to fight it. So I'll decline. Convoy attack, also don't want to fight it. And then they're going to force me... Oh! Okay. <gasps> it she preserved bastard design trials. Oh, this is such a great moment. The tsunami is going to be a wonderful carrier. A wonderful carrier. Actually, I don't even know about the speed being that important. That, that is so much more important on any ship besides a carrier. <laughs> but that's fine. It's still, I guess, a good thing. Uh, please don't let them off lightly. We need to... Can we just... Like, what's going on here? This invasion, hello? How many months have you been invading this place? I mean, we basically surround the area. We have... Kind of? China? <laughs> um, we don't have Shanghai, so that's neutral, I guess. And we don't have Hong Kong. We don't have Hanan. Yeah, but we have a lot of areas around here that uh, hopefully are putting a lot of pressure on Fort Bayard. I just really hope we are able to take that before they collapse. I, we're we're seeing the pro the you know the problems that they're having, and I would so this is actually interesting. It's Russia who might collapse, but France might fight on, which would be the ideal situation for us. If Russia collapses, we'll just take reparations. I still don't really care about Kamchatka. I frankly don't. It's not. It could eventually be used to, if we go to war with the Americans. Boy, that's like the end game boss, by the way. It could be used to invade the Aleutians, probably by, you know, five, six more years of research. Maybe we get some invasions. Uh, text up. Um, one sec. Okay, so I got distracted by something. Yeah, I do have a feeling that this war will end before we end up being able to take too many colonies. But look, at France only has two left anyway. You know what? The next... I don't know why we didn't already think to do this. We probably should move some battleships into the South Pacific. France doesn't have much there anyway. And maybe we can start an invasion there as well. Is anybody in range? Ah, hence the problem. There's nobody in range. So it looks like we really have to go to war with the British, which is not going to be a fun thing, but... Hopefully they have to keep enough ships over in the European side of things that that doesn't create a huge problem for us. Okay, battle in support of... Look at, they're declining all these battles. I, I just feel like that should be a huge, huge points in favor of us. I know it's not... Okay, this is a game mechanic thing, right? Because obviously if the enemy fleet... Well, no, if the enemy fleet... It's not... Yeah, they, they're cut off. They're... I, I, okay, this is like Guadalcanal. If you were, if you refuse, if you just let Guadalcanal be blockaded, they can't survive. They can't get the reinforcements they need. They, they're going to have to surrender. So after six months or so of in the invasion, not... And them declining, which means I'm get... I'm just assuming that if they're declining, that means they're not breaking our blockade or, um, you know, our invasion um, logistics as well, our reinforcements. Cruiser action, still don't really want to fight that, but I'll accept because I knew that they might decline. They might. Convoy defense in somewhere new, Caroline Islands, I'm going to decline that. Enhanced pressure bottle. Okay, torpedoes are getting better. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, this is a great episode. This has been a lot of fun. The rebellion in Polynesia continues. And now we're completely ready for their collapse. It would uh it can happen anytime now. Oh yes, the Ashigar is ready. So let's do rework the design just to see if anything has changed. Something has changed. We now have eleven weight remaining. Oh dear. Well I I know that I know that 
perfect is the enemy of good enough. I'm just trying to think, what are the future advancements that I might need to wait for? I might want to keep some light AA guns on, you know, even when I get AA directors. Let's just, I think it'll only take one more month. Yeah, good. So that, that's okay. We'll do that. For one month for 11 tons freeze, fine. So look, I have to go one more turn then, right? Before we call this episode to close. And look at the money we have ready for this cruiser as soon as we can build it. Enemy coastal raid, don't want to fight that. Northern Marianas, still don't want to fight it. But I will, fine, we'll do it. Okay, this is a, uh, yeah, it's one of those. Maybe if we get lucky, we won't find them. I'm just gonna come back home. I mean, I don't know what the objective is in this. It's not like we're, we don't have merchant. Oh, oh yeah, it's a different base. It'd be kind of fun to sail down to this one and, you know, go into port over there. No. Oh, good. We were <laughs> torpedoed one of their, in fact, their heavy cruiser, the only ship they had in the area. Uh, it was a really good thing that we did not fight them. So they are also going with the same German design with this eight 10 inch guns. <sighs> I have to say that is that is pretty scary. Are our 11 and 11, 10, sorry, 11 eight inch guns going to be able to handle that? I'm I'm pretty skeptical. At least these are quality zero 10 inch guns. So if this happened like right now, I think we might have a chance. Okay, and they have a max speed of 29. They actually have a lot of ammunition. They're looking at a hundred. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not a lot of ammunition. What am I talking about? This is, is this a number which even makes sense? This is uh, 190. Oh, I see. 190 for... Yeah, this is 95, 95 rounds per gun. And we just put 125 on ours. But they are 10-inch guns, so it makes... I mean, that's way too little in my opinion, but still not terrible. Okay. Close this one. We get a... Build our ship. Build the ship. Build a ship. Okay, guns. So I know what time it is now. It's time for a destroyer. Wow, that is brutal. Okay, build, just, oh, okay, let's do rework the design. Eh, one sec. Okay, I got it, I got it back. <laughs> so yeah, it still has 11, we'll just close, we'll build as is, it all looks good. Oh, I'm so excited about this. So we'll have the Ashigar, and I'm just gonna let the random name generation pick the, pick from the list of ships we already have in there. These will be, yeah, 2.3 for 24 months. That's that's not bad. I feel like this is pretty, this is actually okay. Yeah, the ultimate cost ended up being less than 57 million. Again, I don't know how that happened, what we ended up doing that saved that money, but I'm like extremely happy with this vessel. Let's get three of them. And the Miyoko, what a, what a great name. <laughs> what a great name. Uh, okay, so that's going to conclude this episode then. Um, I dare not press the end turn again because we know it will happen. I'll get into a battle. and Anyway, things are looking really good. Obviously, the war is nearly at an end. We're expecting it to come to a close any turn now, any month. Uh, the Russians will collapse. If the French, French fight on, those are the people we can try to invade a little bit more. Uh, I guess we have one other location we can try to invade from. We might as well just set that as a target before I save and quit. Um... Uh, yeah, and I just we have a new heavy cruiser coming up. Remind me. Uh, hopefully, I remember to build a new set of destroyers next turn as well. I just think that things are we're firing on all cylinders. We have oxygen fueled torpedoes, which I'm still debating whether or not we're going to use that. To me, it's it's a uh, it's a tough question because we do see a lot of hits that blow up my torpedoes, and those are just going to ravage our ships if we go with that. I've also long been considering switching to night fighting instead of torpedo warfare it's always it's always a tough call though you know they actually they aid one another right we only want night fighting so that we can launch torpedoes at them 
So probably Torpedo Warfare is fine since it works during the day as well, which I've always, that's always been my explanation. Anyway, so I just, I managed to ramble, so this video went over the 40 minute mark. <laughs> uh, I have a bad habit of doing that. So thanks for watching this one, and uh, I'll catch you back for the next. Until then, stay safe and take care.